Hello, and we're live. Hi, I'm Anders. I'm your host and editor. Welcome to the Survivor Maryland Winner Take All, Episode 8, Live After Show. Uh, we've got some incredible guests today, and Aaron. Aaron, how are you? Morning, your son? I'm having a terrible time today, Anders. Um, I did not think this day would come, period, especially not so soon. So I am mourning the death of my son, who is most definitely older than me, um, and I'm just very sad. The sunglasses won't stay on the whole time. I cannot see a thing, but <laughs> for the bit, and we're, and and we're now, all going like this. We're all putting yeah. our thumbs down and, and booing you silently. Um, I mean, I would expect it. Uh, joining us as guests, uh, Lee, tell everyone who you are, why you're here. Hi, I'm a fan of a lot of College Survivor, but I'm Lee Farrell. Uh, I host a mole LRG called Subversion Finale this week. Yay! Um, but no, this was a perfect episode to be on the after show for. I'm really excited to talk about all the things. And if you don't, if you're not a nerd, uh, an LRG is a live reality game. Lee hosts a mole-based live game uh, that is on YouTube called Subversion Live. Um, Matthew, please introduce yourself to the people who should know who you are but might not. Yeah, so I'm Matthew. I was, uh, uh, you probably know me from the Survivor Maryland All-Stars episode recap where Shannon got voted out. Um, that's probably where you know me from. Or you might know me from Survivor Michigan season one um, or season four, uh, winner of both those seasons if you haven't watched, just a spoiler. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. The so. Katie on of Survivor Michigan. Yeah. Also Survivor Michigan winners at war. Uh, I won that one too. <laughs> oh, such a good season. Can't wait for it. Uh, yeah, coming out this year also. Right now. Um, <laughs> And then, Naomi, you've already been here, but why don't you reintroduce yourself? Oh, uh, I guess I'll be back. No, I'm uh, Naomi. I am uh, the host of Mike White Was Robbed, and I'm also the co-producer of Survivor New York. And I'm older than a lot of these people at College Survivor. Uh, so, Aaron, you feel too young. I feel too old. We're all having a great time. Um, she is here supporting Eric Meisner, uh, as is needed. And then finally joining us, he only got eliminated mere moments ago. Truly, this just happened live, uh, and we're getting his real raw reaction. Andrew, oh my god. Uh, oh. I know. I was so shocked to find out I had been voted out, so uh, <laughs> I had to come on here to talk about it. Well, Andrew, it has been only a quick, short seven years since it happened. Uh, just a real quick, what's been going on in seven years since this happened? <laughs> A lot of stuff has happened in the last seven years. Uh, some some quick highlights. I've lived in five states in the last seven years, been just kind of like traveling the country and finally just settled uh, in North Carolina. Uh, so also got married last year. So my wife and I just bought a house in North Carolina and got oh. settled here. So been uh, been very busy. After a quick stopover in LA to see Anders for, for a year. And then, Aww. Yeah, Andrew was here, which was very funny to find out, um, but absolutely loved it. And I loved even more watching Andrew get voted out of this moment. Uh, so, Andrew, let's talk a little bit about this roller coaster of an episode. Obviously, you look at this episode, and here you are in the majority, in the numbers. Uh, there's four potential newbies who, who could go home, but you have a relationship with Katie. And more importantly, you're going to give her information so that she knows she'll be safe. Um, I've got to ask, why did you tell Katie all that information? And do you regret doing that? I mean, surely she would never use that information to hurt me, right? Surely, like, never. She, she would never do that. Um, I, I would say, like, Katie and I had been working together the whole game. Like, I don't think that's a surprise to anyone watching this. Like, we had been working together from the beginning, you know, had been sharing information back and forth. Like, I think... What's portrayed in the edit is like a one way, like I was sharing all the information with her, but I feel like she was equally sharing information with me. The information she shared probably wasn't as useful because she was never really in the, you know, the, the majority of the numbers. But, you know, I, I think we had been kind of transparently sharing information back and forth the whole time. So this wasn't like the first time I had shared information with her. And so it felt, you know, safer to do that. Um, do I regret it? I've thought about it and I'm like, 
if I didn't tell her myself, she would have known it from Tony. And like, I think the same thing happens either way. And I think if I didn't tell Katie, I'm even more sketchy to Katie because she found out from Tony. And then she's like, oh, he's not telling me information. He's lying. He's withholding information. And it leads to the same place. So like, do I regret it? Kind of. But I think it leads to the same place, honestly. I mean, Katie, despite never being in the majority, has voted correctly all three times. Uh, so good for her. I... I do have to wonder a little bit. So last season, we see the two roommates and their friend dominate the game, control all the vote. They may not all want to be doing the same things, but they do stay together. And this season, you're roommates with Tony. You're both friends with Katie. Your relationships aren't quite as known in that same way. But almost every moment you can, you guys are throwing each other under the bus in some way, <laughs> trying to at least, oh, you know, us two, when are we going to get rid of Katie? Or, you know, Tony was saying all the returners are together. Um, or Tony saying, well, you can't really trust Andrew. Why was that? What was sort of the reasoning behind you and Tony and Katie all sort of not being this tight, cohesive three? I feel like Katie and I were very close and Katie and Tony were very close, but Tony and I were always on like opposite drives and it felt like we didn't really have much of an opportunity to work together. Like I wish we had had, I feel like you know, if I had survived this round a few more rounds, I feel like we would have been able to work a lot closer together. And I was, I think we were planning on that. And I think the edit doesn't show how often we were talking. Um, like we were definitely talking much more than was portrayed. It might not have been, you know, sharing juicy goss, you know, hot goss every single week. But like, I would say we were definitely uh, like talking a lot more than was shown. Um, I think we both wanted to, work together but we were weary of you know being labeled as their roommates and like oh you know having that curse and so we wanted to kind of work together but kind of stay apart a little bit um and i think honestly we both knew how competitive each other were and that if it was convenient for the other one like you'd probably get dropped as kind of we saw so like ultimately it wasn't a huge shock for me either and like we never really went in to the game saying like oh we're gonna work together final two like we never really went in with that mindset so i don't know i feel like i could trust tony but not completely if that makes sense yeah and i think that's fair i don't think you could um looking back to a few weeks earlier with the winnick vote obviously you voted out winnick uh and that created a little bit of a rift with you and the other newbies. Uh, not enough that they didn't trust you, but it did start what would then continue. So looking back to that vote, to that moment where Katie pulls you aside as you're literally walking in and says, we're voting Winnick. Um, knowing what you know now, would you have still voted out Winnick or would you have tried to keep the newbie strong? Yeah. Is Winnick the most important person in the entire season? Be honest. Be <laughs> honest. Winnick has to be, you know, the most crucial, pivotal, uh, intelligent character of the entire season. Um, I As think is noted. Best yes, strategist. The best, the world's best strategist. Jelinski um, Yeah, he, he just got nominated <laughs> for an LRG award. Did you see? <laughs> he, uh, my favorite Winnick quote was, it wasn't shown that much, but the amount of times he said during that vote where he got rid of that was, send him home sad. Um, like, he said that a lot of times about, like, Dylan or Doug. He's like, I don't care which one. We just got to send him home sad. Um, anyway, I, I think... I mean, in retrospect, Katie, like, you know, as, as you said, Andrews, like, as we were walking in, she, like, bumps me and is like, it's Winnick. And I'm like, I didn't even know the context of like who she had flipped like i didn't know any of those things she just said it's winnick and i was like all right like my closest ally in this game says it's winnick like clearly it must be winnick and if i had thought it through better i would not have voted that way like in retrospect probably not my smartest move um ultimately i don't think it mattered like when it was going home either way whether i voted with them or not like it didn't really matter but i think it did alienate fish and Michaela specifically for no real good reason. Um, like it just was really an unnecessary strain on those relationships. Um, the other thing that wasn't really shown in that episode was like Winnick in his brilliance uh, decided that we had the votes. Dylan and Doug were the only ones who could possibly be going that night. So 
we had Katie and we had Morgan who were voting for people and we were supposed to split the votes for Dylan and Doug, which like we didn't have enough votes to split. Like it made no sense. I was supposed to be voting for Dylan that night. So like it would have been even more ridiculous in hindsight to see me vote for Dylan and be like the one weird lone vote for Dylan as everyone was voting for Doug. Like that whole vote was just like screwed from the beginning because yeah, it was just not a good plan. Because you so, guys tried to force the newbies yeah. in return. Does that answer your question yeah. kind of sort of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and well, that follows up to the next week, or not the next week, sorry, specifically not the next week, there was no mutiny because Mike went home. But after that, we have the whole mutiny question. And you have this clo close relationship with Katie. You're supposedly in this group with the Girls Alliance that didn't vote together. Um, and you have to consider, do I flip to the other side, where I know I'm for sure in the minority. You have Tony but you're not sure about anything else. And then that week you also vote out Jess. Looking at both those moments, what were the big criteria that you considered and what do you have any regrets on that? Do you wish you didn't do them? Do you wish you tried something different? What are your thoughts? I think the mutiny decision, knowing that like knowing Hello? Sorry, I think my internet is like cutting out or something. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so I would say the mutiny decision, it seemed like Fish had already been convinced that that was the direction he was going to go, that he was going to switch over. So, you know, knowing Fish was going to be over, it was going to be a five to three kind of thing. And I thought being in that minor minority was worse for my game than... Like, I thought it would be, you know, I knew I was going to be in a five to four minority either way. You know, it was either going to be the returners on my old tribe or, you know, old Zimbabwe versus old Majesta on the new tribe. And I thought, you know, I had also been talking to JS and I had been talking to Tony and I thought I had like a reasonable chance to survive a couple rounds on the other side, um, especially if we could win a couple uh, tribals or immunity, which obviously did not happen. Um, so I, I think that was the idea over there was that I didn't think I was going to be like the first or second one to go on that tribe. I thought like Michaela and Fish would have been before me on the other side. Whereas on that side, like I think Dylan and Doug, I mean, from the beginning, Dylan and Doug, like never like, and me never really saw eye to eye. We always kind of clashed. Look, they were too bro -y and you weren't a bro. We know. I wasn't a bro. So I, I thought there was a higher chance of like egg roll Dylan and Doug trying to go for me on the other side than I would have faced on New Majesta. That was kind of my thinking there. And Jess, I mean, I talked about it. We talked about it. You, you, you did a good job of highlighting like why I chose to vote out Jess. Like, on a personal level, I love Jess. She's amazing. On a game level, she had connections with Dylan, with Doug. Yeah. Jess had connections with everybody, Dylan, Doug, Katie, Morgan. She was in on with all those people, and she – I just didn't think I was the closest person to her. But, Andrew, um, I just have to, like, the so moment that's – I my went mind for about... – it was between Sam and Jess, and to me, <laughs> Sam was going to be more easily swayed in the direction that I would have wanted than Jess would have. The, the moment that sticks in my mind about all of this is Sam did not even know your name and you weren't going to vote her out. Like, did when that happened, when you're at tribal council and the girl who's sitting right next to you goes, you're number one, did, it consider, did you consider at that moment, like, I should not keep this girl around. She will never vote with me because she doesn't know who I am. Well, she can't vote me out if she doesn't know my name, right? <laughs> and yet... I guess that's true, but if she wrote number one on a piece of paper, I guess I'd still count it. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Sam is just such a character. Sam is just so funny. Like, she's just hilarious. And, and in person, she's, like, even funnier. She just, like, says and does random shit that is just, like, so funny. Ugh, love Sam. So, I mean, yeah, I felt like I didn't have a relationship with her, but I felt like she she was going to do her own thing and she was like very much working with uh uh like js and tony and all of them like i felt like he, she was gonna 
I don't know. I, maybe it wasn't the best decision, but I, I felt like Sam was at least going to not go behind people's back and like do her own thing. Whereas I thought Jess had a much more ability to do that because she was so connect, so well connected and she could kind of go any direction she wanted. If that makes one sense. final question from me before we turn it over to anyone else, specifically your mother about this. Um, with the whole vote situation, with the vote being Morgan, were you telling Katie this information just to assuade her fears and be like, you're safe? Or were you doing that with the intent of an idol being played? Because, I mean, spoilers on this, I don't think you knew that Dylan had the idol, but Tony did by that point at least. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that Dylan had one. I thought there was a chance that Dylan or Doug had one, but I... I was pretty confident that if Dylan had one, he would have played it in the Winnick vote because he was so spooked and he was getting thrown around so much. So I thought somebody by the Winnick vote had found one and that if Dylan or Doug had it, either of them would use it that night because they both were so in danger. So I didn't know who had it and I didn't, I didn't think it was likely that Morgan had it. I thought it was even less likely that somebody was going to give one to Morgan, which obviously turned out to happen. Um, and if I was in Dylan's shoes, I probably also would have given it to Morgan so that I wouldn't have been down eight to four. So, you know, good play on his part. But I, I as he describes with Winnick, there's no fucking chance I would have given my idol to Winnick. So I, I kind of thought Morgan was going to be in a similar boat of like, I, I just wouldn't waste my idol on Morgan. Not that, you know, it's a waste on her, but I just didn't think he was going to play it for anybody else besides like himself or maybe Keaton, you know? So that, that I just didn't see that happening um but like okay i know if, even if i knew dylan had an idol then what right like i i i guess i could have not told katie tony would have told katie anyway and then i just look sketchier like i said right like that i was being cagey and that i wasn't giving katie all the information and then you know she votes but my so what was the original intention of telling katie the information just so she had it i mean so that I, like we had been pretty transparent with each other like where the votes were going to go most of the season and i didn't obviously i didn't know if she was going to take that information and be like look andrew said this like let's play the idol on morgan right like you know it like for example she told me that winnick was going to get voted out two minutes before tribal and she didn't have to tell me that right why did she tell me that because you know it builds trust and like you think you can work together down the line and like if you just don't tell each other anything what's the point of being an alliance, right? So I, I was telling her on like those kind of, yeah. like if I hadn't told her that and that vote hadn't have gone down the way it went down, then the next week Katie would be like, what the hell? Why didn't you tell me it was more of whatever, 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 right? Like, yeah, I just didn't. She would have cursed was... you out like Anders at a challenge. Exactly, exactly. And I would have deserved it probably. So <laughs> it, it's the, I just, yeah. I, I don't think I was telling it to, calm herself down but more of like a hey you know this is what the movies are going to do whatever because I, I still was intending to work with her even though like i wanted to vote out one of her returnees like like i told tony like i wanted to keep katie around for a while right and you said you didn't want to do the newbie returner thing forever no no, no. and i wanted to I like think... get dylan and doug out and then we could kind of go play our game like and that was like my goal from the beginning was like okay once dylan and doug are out then we can like go play right it's what everyone's saying, but it's not being done. Uh, yeah, and I think it was also said by Katie. She didn't want to vote out you. She didn't want to vote out Tony. She didn't want to vote out Michaela. Like, it was – but she couldn't have it every single way. And, you know, the roommate thing was such a big deal. So it really just came down to – if it has to be one of the two of you. So uh, my, my great guess. Anyone have some questions for Andrew? I have a question. Please. Andrew – one of my biggest blind sides this episode was finding out that you played football for three years. Um, I'd like to know what position you played and how. I had that in my notes too. Uh, so I played football from like fifth to seventh grade or so. Right. Like I was like a yeah. child, but like this is like a core <laughs> memory for me of like getting out there, you know, like I'm the smallest guy on the field by a lot. Uh, and of course you have the smallest guy on the team and you make him play center. Um, <laughs> Stop! Some, you did not. For some unknown reason, uh, yeah, I played center for a while. I played like tackle. I played uh, corner. I, I played a safety. 
That's hysterical. Yeah. I mean, you saw him tackle in this episode. He's clearly good I, at I it. Did get to, I did get to tackle Doug, which was one of the highlights of the season for me. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I love Doug, and like after the season, we became like good friends. Uh, but uh, yeah, tackling Doug was was definitely very very satisfying. Just yeah, you did that for all the YouTube people. commenters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just imagine an offensive line that looks like tall, tall, and then Andrew, tall, tall. You know, like that's like basically what I was like. You know, I was probably like 65 pounds, like playing against, you know, people twice my weight. But, um, you know, it was, uh, I'm glad that's what you got out of the episode. Yeah, I was thinking kicker or something like that because I thought you played in high school, but. No, no, I did not play. And I, well, I realized like after three years, I was like, I might be a little small for this sport. Like this might not be what I'm cut out to do. Um, and then I ended up playing baseball, which I was much more you know fit for my uh lack of size <laughs> oh no okay i have a question i have a question good where was your survivor maryland uh fandom at coming into a season that's like you know has returners because I thought you played so well with katie and with the idea of being sort of in the middle versus staunchly putting your flag in one camp, were you a big fan and you knew what people were capable of or were you just like, well, I'm not going to cut off everybody? Uh, so I watched Survivor a bunch as a kid. Um, so I knew pretty well like Survivor stuff. Um, I hadn't watched it in year. I still haven't watched it in years, but like as a kid, I, I watched it a bunch. Um, I had watched seasons two, three, and four. Maybe, I don't think five was out by the by the time we filmed so the watched... finale had happened right before this season started wow. yeah so so i watched all the seasons that were out at the time um but the only players that were would have been there were sherry and katie um but i knew katie before i even watched her on season four like we had we had been friends since sophomore year so i had known her like predating her survivor maryland um you know at least airing um she would have like played before that but yeah before it aired so I, I was well aware of you know Katie and uh what she was capable of and whatnot so uh yeah she's she's like obviously a beast as you all know so um <laughs> but just like yeah hyper competitive but then like can flip a switch and she's like the nicest person you ever met so it's uh yeah a lot of fun to play with her um, I guess I got a question real quick, two kind of two parts, but I guess just to kind of understand what happened at that vote, but like, I guess first question, like, did you tell when that scene of you telling Katie that it's going to be Morgan, was that like day of tribal? Was that like an hour before? And then I guess like, what did Katie say to you? Where did you leave that as like, what was her plan? Did she tell you like, hey, the returnees are going to vote for a newbie? Did she tell you that it was Tony? Did she tell you like, what, what was your impression of once you left that meeting? Like, what did you think Katie was going to go and do? Honestly, I don't remember. Anders would probably remember better than I do, but my my recollection of it was like, oh, okay, yeah, if it's Morgan, that's fine. Like, basically, as long as it's not me, like, it's all good, was basically, I think, where she was at because she knew she was only one of three people that really could have been targeted, um, so, like, from the returners. So I, I think she was basically at peace with it not being her. Um, and didn't, I don't remember her saying much about who the returners were. were like, I think... Uh, yeah, the big thing is that Katie knew Dylan had the idol, but was like, is Dylan going to play it on Morgan? Like, at that point, do we just vote for Morgan? Like, there's something we can do. You saw the conversation of her and Eric being like, should we just vote a returning out? Like, everyone meet up and vote out Dylan. Because, like, yeah. it, it was all hinging on, will Dylan play the idol on someone? She needed Andrew to tell her who it was so that she could say Andrew said it. She can't say Tony so told her, but... Uh, did they did didn't Tony tell who told who told Katie first, Tony or Andrew? Uh, in filming, Andrew. In okay. reality, I'm sure Tony texted Katie beforehand, and then they yeah, talked about it. Okay, probably, yeah. But like, both of them telling her is what's gonna cinch it for her. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just so, one more uh, funny thing about the 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 Tony Katie thing. The so, I mean, spring break was like a big theme that like got kind of glossed over quickly. But uh, I, I, I know at the beginning of the season, Katie says something to the effect of like, we're going on spring break together. You can't vote me out before then or something like something, something, something. And then um, we so Tony and I were pretty open on the fact that we were going to spring break together. Like 
it was a big group of us. It was like 18 of us there, but it's totally like normal if you go to spring break with your roommate, right? Like that's not a big deal. We didn't try to hide that fact. Um, but then obviously both of us couldn't, couldn't let anybody know that Katie was there. So like we told no one, like we had a whole bunch of squad photos. Katie's in none of the group photos from the trip, just in case somebody posted it on Instagram or Facebook or something like legitimately, she was like, I will not be in any of these photos. Like nobody can know. Um, and then we got back and Jess comes up to me and she's like, oh yeah, I saw you were in, you know, in Cancun with Tony over spring break. And I was like, oh, you got us, you know, like, like I was like, we weren't trying to hide that. Like, that's not a big deal, right? But the fact that Katie was there was not known by anybody. So I just thought that was like a funny little, uh, funny little random thing. Where'd Katie say she went on spring break? Nowhere? She was just like... She just didn't say. She just didn't say. Um, Andrew, do you think they voted you out because you have the best smile? I think that must be it. I think that's like mm. the only logical thing. They were just jealous. I think that's really what it comes down to. Too threatening. Yeah. They knew that it was a best smile competition coming up next. Hey, Andrew, if it's final three, you, Tony, Katie, without seeing the edit, obviously, just in the game <laughs> at that time, who do you think would have won between the three of you? I don't know. I would say Tony would have had a really good chance because I think he was playing very strategically with McQuad. He, you know, played physically and helped – Ultimately, most of his efforts were in vain because they kept losing. But, you know, he was like a physical player. Like, he was a strategic player. He had the connections, like, with Katie. And I I think if I'm on the jury at that point, I might go Tony. So that's right. why I would have had to cut him immediately post-merge, you know. I would, I would have had to cut ties with Tony, cut ties with Katie, you know, just take it to the end. Yeah, that was – you should have just cut ties with everyone you had relationship with, work yeah. with Dylan and Doug. I yep. think you should have just done something completely different. Um, yeah. Anyone have any final questions for Andrew? Yeah, I have one that's actually related to what you just said, Anders. So um, say that the move works out. You you tell Katie they idle out someone that is not you or Tony. What was the ideal for – because I, I think you made a really good point in saying we don't want to just vote you know, all of them out and then leave it where – we are outnumbered in voting Katie and it doesn't even matter what we do. Like, I thought that was a really great point from you, but for you all, what do you think, who, who else would you have wanted to bring in to make that happen? Cause still it would have only been three of you. So I would imagine that you probably had some other plan of like who was down to work with you, Tony, Katie. Yeah. I mean, I think it would have been me, Tony, Katie. I, I really wanted to work with Jack. I thought I could have like, you know, that wasn't shown, but Jack and I had been talking for a while. And I think Jack would have been a, a person I really would have liked to have worked with. Um, and then Miranda by association. Um, so uh, Jack and Miranda would have been good ones. Um, I mean, Tony had been working with JS. So I thought JS would have been somebody we could have pulled in um, on like kind of the fringe. Michaela, I also really enjoyed playing with Michaela and I thought we had a good relationship. So I, I think those were some of the people I was hoping to be on like the the fringe with um so i think uh yeah i i i i yeah the comment i i definitely probably could have done better with working with dylan or doug but like i just had it in my head that like oh not... this comment's fully facetious it's saying yeah, michaela yeah. and dylan and then sam and eric the two no i know but I'm, I'm just saying like like legitimately i think maybe maybe not dylan or doug but like morgan or egg roll or people like that like i maybe could have worked with better, but um, yeah, Dylan and Doug, like I just, from the beginning, we were just not going to work together. I, I I don't know why we got off on the wrong foot and it just wasn't working out. So if Sherry final two would have been a good idea. Yeah. Um, Queen. Uh, Sherry, that would have been, that's a dream final two right there. You could have kept her in the game and then, you know, she wouldn't oh, have yeah. Exactly. But like, I'll yeah, get it, you a job as soon as we're done. Like just stay <laughs> here with us. If Sherry, if Sherry and I were on the same tribe, I definitely would have convinced her to stay, just for me. Um, and then, oh, go ahead, Naomi. Oh, I just have, I just have a question. I'm dying to know the vibe of like this eight person mutiny tribe conversation, where you're all like, "Yes, yeah, so we're going into the merge. We're all gonna work together, and it's gonna be awesome. Let's all vote for the same person." Like, how are you feeling as a Survivor fan? Are you like, I don't know if I should go along with this? Like. I'm curious how much trepidation versus like enthusiasm you had for that group of eight. I definitely knew that was not who I wanted to be finally. Like there was no, 
I had no intention of making that final eight, but I had every intention of like using that group for what it was worth. Um, and I, I don't even, I don't think there's really too many people in that group. Maybe JS was, you know, he talked to big like, oh, newbies game. I think he even would have flipped off. Like, I don't think there's anybody in that eight who wanted that to be the final eight. Like, I don't think anybody really would have benefited from that, honestly. Um, so I, legitimately was hoping that that would be like okay merge like maybe two or three rounds like we go with that and then kind of switch it up and kind of let let the chaos reign when there was only a couple returners and like it wasn't you know an existential threat because i think most of the newbies saw the returners as an existential threat but only when when there were only a couple of them left they weren't they, they kind of weren't right so that, that that's kind of how i think most of us were looking at the situation um well andrew it's, I'm so sad to see you go. You're such, you are a great narrator in this season. And most importantly, you're a great Katie defender, which is something that we need in every episode. Someone to be like... And a great, great individual player. Listen, yeah. as, a, as a professional Andrew defender, great player, great game. I was impressed every episode. I was literally just like looking through my notes for any other questions I might have for you from like every episode. But like you played a game that I understood and that I really liked and I really appreciated watching. Mm -hmm. And I will be in mourning for the remaining episodes of the season. I, I, I appreciate that. Just a couple more random things. I, I even wrote notes this time. Uh, but <laughs> just like watching the episode, uh, a couple random things. Uh, Dylan, after the season, you know, as we were chatting, and I was like, oh, man, you got me with the idol, whatever. Dylan said, yeah, he went up to Katie and was like, how sure are you that Andrew is, you know, telling the truth and that everyone's going for Morgan? And apparently Katie said, 99.9% .9 sure. And Dylan's response was, well, if it's good enough for hand sanitizer, it's good enough for me. <laughs> um, and I'm really mad that that wasn't videotaped because that would have been like, I told Anders that that needed to be the title of the, the episode was hand sanitizer because I thought that was going to be like perfect. Um, and then what else did I have to say? Oh, uh, I, I even said, oh, quote, these damn idols are going to be the death of me, which like bruh uh I, I know i'm the narrator of the season but that was a little too spot on right like <laughs> that was like the the foreshadowing there was ridiculous also in your voting confessional going oh i feel like death yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah i was just uh yeah I, not, there was also a line where you said, this idol isn't going to go on me. I'm not worried about it. I know. You said that so many times. You were like, I'm worried for Tony or Katie. I'm not worried to be for fair, me. To be fair, Tony seems like the better choice to pick. Legitimately, I thought if – because if Morgan was going to get the idol played on her, I thought it was going to be Dylan or Doug. And I thought one of them would want to go for Tony over me. Like, legitimately, I thought that's the direction they were going to go was – I don't know how they came up with me instead of Tony. I don't know if that was Katie's weighing things, or I don't know if that was like Dylan being like, Andrew's been targeting me since day one. Like we got to get him. Like, you know, I think either one is, is legitimate, but um, I, I thought I, you know, obviously I had done the calculation in my head of like, there definitely could be an idol. One of us could be going home. And I thought it was going to be Tony over me. Um, if I thought it was going to be me, I don't think I would have done anything differently. Like, uh, there's not much I could have done, honestly. Like, I, I, I don't think I would have changed things significantly, but um, yeah, that's just how I was thinking about it. Yeah. Um, well, that's about all I have on my, uh, on, on, on my list. Oh, the only other thing is, uh, uh, yeah, from, from the previous JS, the rat, I'm, I'm really interested because like legitimately I know now about as much as ever as the fans, right? Like, so I'm, I'm excited to watch as a fan now. Here we are, Katie saying that you're a star. Um, Twisting the knife <laughs> while saying love you, you're a star. I know, I know. Yeah, Katie, sure. I'm going to have some words for you eyes. this episode. So be uh, ready. Like, you can't I, have I, it all. I will say, you know, Katie and I, like, we're, we're all good. Like, uh, she, we've stayed friends, like, you know, after the season. And she even came out to Seattle to come hang out. And we got snowed in together and hung out. And so it was a... Uh, yeah, still much love for Katie and all, all the people in the season. So even though, you know, obviously backstabbing me, but, you know, it's it's fine. It happens like, you know, what you're signing up for. So all good. Well, Andrew, um, <laughs> Katie, I haven't seen the episode yet, but I know I voted you out. So. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> which uh, is hilarious. Um, well, Andrew, thank you so much for joining. Uh, obviously, we're all sad to see you go. Um, but like Tony said, the threats are going home. You know, it has to happen. And the good news is now you can watch the rest of the season and be entertained by all the other chaos that will happen. Um, and you don't have to listen to the Newbies Returner thing every single week. True. Um, catch, me, catch me on the jury, though. Catch me on the jury. Uh, yeah. Uh, King yeah. Ponderosa. There we go. King Ponderosa. Oh, man. King I, Ponderosa. Uh, I, and we will see you in future episodes. Just not uh, yeah. not as much of a narrator as we would want. Yeah, just um, don't text Doug, okay? I think you should still let him be a narrator, personally. For us. Not for anybody in the game. But just for the audience. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I think... I have a whole bunch of thoughts about Ponderosa and like final tribal and all of those things that I would love to share at a future date. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep those to myself for now. We'll, we'll save those until after the season. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Tell us what you think about the final three, Andrew. Yes, um, exactly. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. You're, you're welcome to watch. You're welcome to stay in the background, but I'm going to kick you out now. Um, <laughs> okay. Have a good night in North Carolina. Bye um, son. I love you. Andrew. Good yes. game. I'll just judge from the comments. Don't want, don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. Um, so uh, that episode, what? Oh, Jesus! <laughs> it's so bright. Erin <laughs> did not want to look at Andrew. She would start crying. Um, it's so true. Uh, what an episode. Am I right? <laughs> what? Yes, you're right. <laughs> I yeah. Just- this episode, I we you know we get the exclusive, we get the preview of the episode. I knew I didn't have time to watch it beforehand, so I watched it earlier, and then I had to stop watching it. Tribal Council, and I could not come back for seven hours to finish the episode. And in my head, I was like, "What is going uh-huh. to happen?" I was so I could not stop thinking about this Tribal Council. Then watching it was even my jaw was on yeah. the floor of the New Jersey transit train. That was incredible. <laughs> I also was so jaw dropped. I started getting nervous as soon as Dylan was like, we got to get one of these like strong strategic threats out from the newbies. And I was like, fuck. You were like, Sam is like, fucked. That's my- yeah, it has to be Sam. No, but I was like, oh my God. I literally wrote <laughs> like several lines before tribal in my notes. I wrote um, Andrew playing so individual and is one of the only newbies doing that. That's my winner. Uh <laughs> In fact, was not, but yeah, devastating ending. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I would have predicted this because even as much as they would talk about the roommate thing, I didn't think it was a foreshadowing thing because I was like, Andrew and Tony are the ones literally giving them information to save themselves. There's no way they're going to take out one of Andrew or Tony. So I felt very blindsided by this at the end. I was like, this, this is your source of info you're you're not gonna take them out literally right? yeah i'm i don't think this was a good move for katie i don't know if she i think i don't, I don't know if i don't think she decided it to be fair i do think it was probably like the others just wanted this and she didn't like she didn't think it was worth it to stop this if she was already gonna like fight for tony she didn't think that she could also fight for andrew which sucks um i don't think that she controls it but i think that this does show that she doesn't have like a like firm grasp on the game as like we thought she did i mean the important quote here by katie is she can't have the best of both worlds she is trying to balance a lot of things and at the end of the day it's andrew or tony (laughs) i i want to disagree with you Aaron, but first i think we need to pull up andrew's comments (laughs) oh do you you want to do you want to come back and talk about my really quick yeah (laughs) my moment (laughs) Uh, I, I just, I, I forgot to, t- so, so Meisner and I, like, we were in, um, and Tony, like, we were all in, like, the same living and learning program, junior and senior year. He's, like, legitimately a crazy person. Like, legitimately, <laughs> like, is, is nuts. Uh, my, my, like, just outside of him just, like, being manic and crazy, my favorite Meisner movement was, uh, one of my other roommates, not Tony, was driving. We have, like, a big hill on campus, um, and one of my roommates was driving up the hill and I'm riding shotgun and Meisner sees us and he's like, yo, he's on his bike riding down the road. And he's like, yo, can you guys give me a lift up the hill? And so he grabs onto the side of the car and we just like bring him up the hill. <laughs> this man has no helmet, nothing. And he's just like holding on for dear life up the hill. And he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, we're good. And just like lifts off and like shoots himself forward. And we're like, all right. 
Bye, Eric. We'll see you later. Um, yeah, legitimately a crazy person. So just like seeing him, you know, try to strip naked and like fight somebody in that challenge was just like par for the course for Meisner. So yeah. Anyway, I I, I forgot I was going to tell that story. So <laughs> yes, thank and you for that. Better with your uh, for with your recruiting there, Anders. Make sure that they're like uh, you know saying. Uh, I yeah. don't regret casting Meisner. Are you joking? He stripped and followed Micah. What more do I want from him? And he quit Whoa. before Faith got voted out. You know what? I'm That's fine so that. true. And he's a real one for that. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't cast more than one Meisner, but I'll take at least one. All right. Thank you, oh, Andrew, geez. for the yeah. Meisner. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I'll go back into the comments. Bye. <laughs> back, back, back to the void. Um, what a king. Okay, Aaron, you're wrong. You're wrong. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, let's go now. No, okay, sorry. I just before I go after Aaron, I just want to say, Cooper, go fuck yourself. Team Eric yep. till till forever. Um Real. so I think that with this is actually not the worst thing in the world for Katie. Now, ideally Katie gets out a non-ally, but at the same time, if somebody finds out how close her, Tony, and Andrew are, or realizes that she's stumping for Tony and Andrew really hard. I think that with this idol play and with the returners being in such a difficult position, you can't risk alienating the four other people who are working in your interest just to protect your future interests. If that makes sense. Like I think if you go too hard for both Tony and Andrew, you risk everybody realizing that those two are like really, really important mm -hmm. to your game. I and did say point, that to be fair. I did say ally. that. I just no, don't think that it was a good I is just he, don't think she should have let him go because what like yeah those, those I, are, I, I agree she shouldn't have to like she shouldn't go that hard to like look out for two of the newbies but those are also the two newbies that are looking out for her she doesn't have Michaela anymore Michaela does not trust her anymore Jess is gone like those are the only people on the other side that would have been looking out for her and why now she's just only let Morgan go why can't you just let Morgan go I think Alex oh is because she's no, mother Matt, no. oh. what do you mean? You're wasting. See, I I you're agree. Wasting. I don't think that that was a waste. You're at wasting all. the returnee idol on saving Morgan. Mm -mm. It's not a waste really... because like it's like she said, like they just split next week and then you have to. Yeah. Like yeah. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen next week though? It's seven versus next week. Five. Is, no, because and especially even Andrew saying like I want Doug and Dylan out and then we can start playing. Like if Morgan goes here, yeah. now you're losing Doug and Dylan and now Katie's like fully reliant on Andrew and Tony and it's like well, that's I, not putting her in a, any better of a like, position. Aren't they screwed next week? They don't have an idol, and they've just solidified that, like, JS has been saying the attorneys are so tight. They just proved it in front of everybody. I think the the one shot, because, like, the But one now they know that there's a rat. Tony's not going yeah, to accept to it. Nobody's going to yeah. suspect Tony of it. That, that, that's kind of, like, it. it's an unintended consequence, I think, that there's a little bit, there's going to be a little discord over who told... I, I personally think I agree with Aaron. I feel like Andrew was not the move here because if you're getting that information from Andrew and Tony, you know what, if they're looking to make moves, maybe they're looking to make another move because like you said, they are in the minority still. So they now are in the minority without an idol. But if you have both Andrew and Tony who have already been feeding information, maybe you can pull them into a, another move. That's why I disagree with the Andrew vote out here or a Tony vote out had it been in that direction. The only way Andrew could work is if they use that as ammo to say JS wanted the ringleader of the Sababa newbies gone and that's why he's the rat. If she can use it and say, mm, yeah. who, who does she need to flip next week? She really needs Michaela um, and... Um, Fish now. Yeah, she needs Michaela and Fish to flip back. I, I mean, there's a little bit of you know, contempt within McQuad, but I don't think they're flipping yet. So no. who does she need? She needs Mikhail and Fish. Could she say, you know, hey, JS was the rat. He wanted Andrew, the leader of the, the ringleader of the well, Sabah movie's gone. Actually, if she can do that, it makes sense. But Is JS uh, saying the ringleader is Andrew or the ringleader is Fish? I thought it implied Andrew, but I, you, you would know more than me, so. Well, uh, to be fair, I don't fully know if he was even being serious, but he references, like, the person who got them all to flip, and Fish is the one credited with that. Yeah, that was Fish, yeah. I will say, regardless, though, I don't think it has to be the ringleader, but I think that this does, like, them voting Andrew does indicate that, like, it is a an OG Majesta that is the rat. There's no way it's Sam. There's, you know, and, like, she's going to be protecting Tony, and then Jack and Miranda are always going to defend each other, so if it was one of them, then it was both of them. 
And so it's like, yeah, then it was probably JS, the person who is known for being messy and doing messy things and trying to make big moves and things like that. So that's a very easy person to pin it on. And is that going to be enough, though, to get Michaela and Fish to say, oh, all right, we'll go work with this tight group of five returnees where, you know, we clearly have, you know, we're clearly on the bottom. Like they're kind of in. We can hope. They're on the bottom of two groups. Yeah. Yeah. They're on the bottom of two groups of five, seemingly. Though I think the returning group of five is somewhat less together than McQuad even because I don't. Mm -hmm. that returning five wants to go final five they the creepy crawlers the creepy crawlers yeah thank you i well what's important is that sabab has been on the bottom since they flipped and they're just even more i mean they've lost out two numbers but let's go even further back to just the beginning of this where we see all the newbies collude over finally we're going to use this tribe soft we've had since episode three uh we're or yeah uh we're going to use this we're going to make it so there's three returners on one side two on the other no matter which side wins, a newbie goes home. I saw a comment that went, why are we even seeing this? We know it's a merge. Well, what do you think the split is of the immunities, huh? Huh, <laughs> oh, ever think about that? Um, I mean, it is so interesting. We just see the newbies are like, yeah, we are so tied into this newbie versus returnee thing. Yeah, crazy. Um, and they continue to hold on to it during this, uh, this merge, the split of everything. Do we think... As Andrew said, none of them were like, this is going to be final eight. Do we think the returner newbie split is smart? Like, or do we think it limits what everyone can do, how they can play their game? I think it's smart as a facade, but if nobody, mm -hmm. if I think it's smart to act like that is what's happening, but then make inroads with the returnees and like talk yeah. to them and start setting yourself up for when that's not how it ends up. It's kind of like a battle of willpower, I think, because you have like this propaganda up here that everyone should be faithful to the group. You're building your own thing behind the scenes and you're waiting for the first person to fuck up that isn't you. So that you can be like, well, that person is the bad guy for going against us. Like you, you see the big tangent from JS talking about flippers. Right. And so you're waiting for one person to mess up and, and be the person who did too much. So then you can say, you're the reason why the newbie Alliance failed and now we're all doing our own thing. And by the way, I already have my own thing that I've been working on for like three episodes, but I am not the reason that the Alliance failed. Yeah, I just really worry about like the narrative of a season, right? That um, that sometimes if you if you buy too hard into like what you're the the facade like you're talking about Aaron that it all of a sudden becomes the dominating like if the threat is oh well the returners we have to vote them out they're so threatening and then it becomes okay if you flip to the returners are you a flipper are you a, a like a bad player and then if the returner gets to the end does the returner have all the credit but you're a flipper so you if you get to the end you don't like I, I worry for like uh the narrative that is being created that will like maybe negatively influence a jury but i do really like that this narrative means that the five returners are sticking together because i i was sweating when they're like yeah we'll just lose morgan i was like no we can't please like just let, let there be interesting gameplay and it all worked out so i'm happy morgan stayed but like the morgan defending i don't quite understand <laughs> Like, from a she perspective had... of, I love all of the other returnees, but, like, what is she doing? Even Katie was like, Morgan doesn't even want to do challenges because it show might up the mess up her yeah. hair. Yeah, she wasn't at the meeting with the dumplings. She missed Eric's dumplings. Like, imagine. That's crazy. Yeah. Anders, did she have a, was she the one who had the iconic, like, I had a bagel for breakfast line? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you, what did you guys have for breakfast? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> and then after Sadie's dead, I actually had a bagel. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Morgan, uh, and again, another iconic line by Morgan this episode. Why is no one targeting me? I'm fun and flirty. <laughs> He's like, I'm not the quiet uh, one in the corner. Uh, was she? And, was she flirty? And then she she also said that. Yes, yes. She said what? She called herself obnoxious. That was so funny, too. She also Maybe does she... the fun thing of going, do I have to pick any side? All right, <laughs> Tony's the big physical person. You guys win. Destroy dog. Like... She can that's be, so fun and flirty of her. That's and the thing is, so fun and flirty. She has her dinner dates. Um, well, look, Morgan says if they want to ignore her, that's going to be their problem. She's going to chill on the sidelines and make it further. And you know what? Complain all you want about Morgan doesn't do a whole lot. 
she got eight votes and didn't go home. As Sam so, said, as Sam did. said, I'm playing the game how I'm playing it. It works for me. I'm sorry, it doesn't work for you. And exactly, you know what? <laughs> Everyone wants people to do it, be doing specific things, but Morgan did what she needed to, and she's still safe. What did she do? The right no, thing because she's here. <laughs> did I don't know. I, I mean, you know, some say that Andrew played an amazing game, but who's still here after this episode? Okay, listen. <laughs> listen, food order does not equal how well people were at the game, how good people were at the game. It does not. Sounds like a Morgan hater. Um, <laughs> or an Andrew lover. How about that? He's my child. Then this must have been a really bad episode for you. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we, we have these returners. We have Eric trying to curry favor. The moment Doug says, oh, my God, I don't hate Eric as a person. I'm going to vote him out if we lose, but I don't hate him. <laughs> Social game skyrocketing for Eric. Yeah. This, is, this is what you like to see. Nature yeah. is healing. As we have learned from College Survivor, right? Do not take people to White Castle. Make them dumplings. <laughs> Real. Yeah. Don't to go fair, to bubble tea. To be fair, if you take people to White Castle, you might win. That's so true. true. So true. You're right. I'd take that back. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's real. Oh, wait. Sometimes. I thought, I wrote down a comment. Somebody said, um, oh, Jacob K., the iconic Jacob K., uh, said Doug versus Eric Hall brawl in the comments of the, the <laughs> <laughs> list stream. I thought that was so fucking funny. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. When 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 Eric crushed Dylan in Steal the Bacon and Dylan just walks back and he's like, he's huge. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dylan dislocated his shoulder for like half a second and was like, yeah, I'm out. All right. I, shoulder dislocated. Know, he might have had a concussion, the- Matthew. In your shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> the other bacon was so lopsided. For a moment, I went, was this, It was it closer to one side than the other? But I really just think that one side was worse at it. Like, yeah. I, I mean, when you have egg roll, it's a cheat code. Like, you're just going to win every round he's in. And I do think, well, I do think one of the most embarrassing things is the fact that JS just, just beat Tony. Like, Tony thought it was going to be such an easy thing, and he just missed in my head i went tony destroy that twink and then he he fought back it was so funny and the twink destroyed tony exactly don't look that up don't look that up up. (laughs) this clip's gone huge on other sites uh um but yeah i mean the jack team absolutely destroying the dylan team uh i mean had the dylan team won the people who could have been voted out are js Jack, Miranda, Eric, Doug, and uh, Fish. So I think it would have made it a lot less suspenseful. It's either Eric or Doug, and then all the returners are like, we're going to get fucking JS out of here. <laughs> we're going to play this idol and get JS out. Yeah. This is exactly why, though, if I was Morgan, I would have picked that group because there's just such easy, like, riffs in that group of where to vote and who to vote out. I mean, I, I don't think there was a lot of strategy going into Morgan's choice at all, but I, I was really puzzled by her choice not to pick that side because I was looking at the two groups and thinking, you're 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 safe if they win and you're safe if they don't win if you pick them, and and, and the fact that it took an idol to save her, I I, I it, she she is here to not a lot of credit of her own. I'm afraid. I agree with that. I also think didn't Jack was Jack picked first. At first I was like, who are the cap? It was Jack and Dylan, right? Mm-hmm. Um and I thought Dylan, like maybe Dylan should just pick all the returnees so that they're, they're all safe or they're all a target. But I think Jack immediately picked a returnee or two. So good on her for realizing that was split they, them up. Yeah. They literally Jack said in confessional, I didn't put it in because it was just who you know, whatever. She tried to replicate as close as she could the split plan so they mm. could do kind of what they wanted to. It worked, um, yeah, it worked out. Or it could have worked out great. Um, and unfortunately, because of gender differences, Dylan had to pick uh, two women and Jack only had to pick one. So it's like it was much harder for Dylan to get all of the returners while Jack had an advantage of just like getting one more person. Um, well, I, I mean, I just want to say that, like, I, I have to give a lot of kudos to, like, the McQuad and to uh, this eight person. Like, they are making, like, 
plans. Like they are really sitting down with their little pieces of paper and ironing out what's going to happen. Everybody circle up on the floor, crisscross applesauce, and let's make a plan. Like I, I do respect it uh, that they're working very hard to to achieve something. I think it doesn't work, think, but they work yeah. hard. I think the one flaw, <laughs> I think the flaw in their plan, and like I was trying to think, like were they screwed from the beginning because Andrew and Tony were going to leak? But I guess like, do we think? I think the move probably should have been, hey, we're going to come up with a name 10 minutes before tribal. Like, tell the attorneys, literally, like, we don't know who it is yet. We don't know. It could be Morgan, could be Dylan, could be Katie. Tell them we don't know. We're going to meet 10 minutes before tribal. We're going to lock on a name, and then we're going to go to tribal. Like, I, I think they could have even... Delete. They but, could have even, like, decided on a name, but then made the plan to say to the returnees, like... They definitely should have Like, said say all before. of the names. Because, like, yeah. yeah, Dylan picked up on it because they were being so stupid about it. They were like, these are the <laughs> I, reasons Dylan's a threat. These are the reasons Katie's a threat. Morgan, she's not here. It's like, yeah, so of course they're going to be fucking voting Morgan. It's Edgardo. Like, it's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think the hard, the hard thing I would see, though, with that is you could see like a true battle of like people wanting to just get their way. I think there was a moment for sure when we see Andrew and JS talking about why don't you just go for Dylan? Why, why are we going for Morgan? We should not be wasting that. And so I feel like getting everyone to agree that we can go for one last minute was hard enough when you had people definitely wanting to control the vote of those eight votes and, and make sure that they had that locked in. And you, you could see that, which made me think this eight is not going to be very strong together. I mean, they did in the end, they did all agree on Morgan. And I think it yeah. was the smart plan, but it was almost like so smart that it was obvious. Like right. if you're thinking Obviously. if you're the returnee is like, hmm, if the newbies are smart, they would do Morgan. Okay. So they're going to do Morgan. Like, I think I the like issue was, yeah. is that the, the name itself, like they may not all, they may have decided, Oh, we're going to, and they did have a meeting right before the, the, vote to decide are we really doing this at the end of the day they're not coming into that discussion without a name in mind and andrew and tony were going to be aligned on that fact it wasn't going to be katie so then it's dylan or morgan and the information is going to be set and they have phones like the issue yeah. here is like if they're going to tell katie they're going to tell katie yeah. whether or not they was, just, yeah i think the plan as you've seen already yeah. they can do it walking in like <laughs> And Dylan will look behind Fish and go, is it me? Is it me? <laughs> um, but, yeah. I <laughs> Katie doesn't understand either. Um, that was to the, I think, I don't understand why Katie let mm -hmm. Andrew leave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait till next episode maybe to fully understand her thinking. Um, Katie's just saying that because she doesn't want my smoke. I think well, she can get it next yeah. episode. Um Dylan definitely Look, could have said, like, I'm the one with the idol. Like, I deserve a little more of a say here and who goes home. And, you know, if that was right before tribal, maybe Kate just didn't have time to put up a stand and try to save Andrew and just had to go with the plan. So, yeah, I can't wait for the flashback. And there is one um, spoiler. <laughs> uh, well, we also see we finally get some moments from people like Doug, people like Eric. We get a moment from each returner trying to do something when they're up against this eight. Um, uh, uh, we'll get to that, Katie. We'll get to Aaron critiquing your game. But <laughs> we have Doug here trying to make inroads, trying to start playing socially. We get him and JS starting to work together. Uh, when your two faves get together, uh, Aaron, how do you feel about Doug's game? I mean, in this you episode? know, I love Doug. So saying your two faves like that is not true for me. Um, I'm a big Doug stan, Dr. <laughs> Doug. Um, I honestly think like, I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea for him, honestly. Like he needs to start building up avenues outside of the returnees. And I think that building it with somebody who is a big threat and is a big shield and is going to like be a target ahead of him. Doug does not have many targets ahead of him. So he needs as many as he can get. So like, honestly, I don't think that it's the worst thing to like keep JS around a little while for Doug. I don't think that that's terrible. But I think that there's a difference between uh, keeping somebody around as a shield and working with them. And I think that mm. Doug recognized that and knows that. And he's like, I don't trust this kid, but he's like making some good points, you know? I think like you said, he's planting seeds and at some yeah, point one of them's going to sprout. Yeah. One of them's going to yeah. sprout and somebody's going to come to him and be like, hey, 
work with us on a move and he's going to be, you know, in. So I think he had the right mindset and he hasn't picked a person yet. It's just keeping the door open and somebody's going to come to him and need his vote at some point, most likely. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's a pretty wise move. Yeah. And I don't even think he's like locked in. Like, I think he might want to bring JS a little bit, but yeah, like you said, Matthew, like he was planting seeds with like fish and Jack and Miranda, who I think are all good players to be planting seeds with and to be like people yeah. that, you know, might be looking to like make a move in the future or do a little flip. So I think that, yeah, I think that Doug played this episode great. And I think we're actually starting to see like Doug in full force which I'm very excited, which is always a fun thing to watch. And so that is something I'm very excited about. And JS was very real for saying that Doug deserved to win his season. Okay, no one oh. said let's attack Santi. No, I did love the Santi mention. When he yeah, Santi mentioned, mentioned, we were winning. Yeah, I did. I did write Santi mention, question, or exclamation Santi point. Santi mention, Michael cameo. Victoria cameo. Victoria cameo. cameo. Angie, so Angie cameo. Angie mention slash so cameo. So the trio shout out. Yeah. Although Katie did say in the beginning, she was like, Soka Trio pigeonholed themselves into working only with themselves. Did Katie not just almost kind of do the same thing? She's saying she's more open. And, and then later she goes, yeah. but now she, newbies don't want to play with me. But did she lock herself into the returnees now? Like, I guess. I mean, again, we'll it wasn't all her decision. Like, usually most things are always Katie's decision. So yeah. I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt that, you know, she's just one out of five. So maybe she didn't control that vote. But, you know. All right. Uh, I, I, I think. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I think one of the things that I really liked that Katie said is, first of all, it, it's no secret that she is sitting there with this massive target that she can't do anything about based on her previous gameplay. And I, I think that it, it was like, I forget, it was like, does it bother you that I'm trying to play this game? It was, it was something along those lines that she said that it's like, no matter what she does, people are going to think she's trying too hard to play the game. So I think that she just had to kind of double into something. And so I, maybe maybe her fear of that trio and, and and is what spooked her into voting for Andrew. I'd be really interested in hearing that, but I think she knows she has to play a little more out in front right now. And I, I like the way she's doing it. Um, I have something just to circle back really quickly about, about Doug and, and the way that he's sort of socializing with everybody. I thought it was absolutely hysterical how Doug was kind of like, Doug reminds me of like the seniors you talk to when you're a freshman in college where he's like, yeah, just so you know, like I played with my roommates and it like didn't really go well. So like just I'm just letting you know, like be careful about these other like he's giving you the goss from his POV of like this happened to me. So like, you know, just make sure that you drink two cups of water for every shot you take. And he's giving you. But I love that he's being like, look, that used to be me, but I don't have that advantage anymore. But also, like, Tony and Andrew totally have that advantage. That's crazy. We should do something about that. I thought I thought, I was really excited to see that, like, Doug and Eric had this great, hilarious conversation with JS where the fool me three times took me out from Eric. Uh, <laughs> but but that they seem so flexible. It, I think it's one thing to be flexible in Survivor. It's another thing to have the ability to seem flexible and actually – Doug, JS, and Eric all are really good at sort of putting on a face when talking to somebody that they might not actually work with. Yeah, my favorite thing, though, is that when JS does it, it does not work on any of the returnees. Like, they all just walk away from the conversation being like, so that was bullshit. Like, Eric, now, it took him a little bit, but he got there. But now that Mike's gone, everybody else is like, yeah, no, we know that we can't trust that kid. But you do have two moments from this episode. Eric says he's very convincing, and Katie also says, I can see why he's so convincing. But you also have Dylan going, this kid, I would never believe him. I hate him. <laughs> I, would, I would put money on JS and Ever will vote together at least one once more during the season. We'll vote on the same side. Have they ever voted together? I'm trying to think. Oh, my. Uh, front up. I, th I think, it's, oh, yeah, I think, I think they might. They might not work super long, but I think at some point in a future vote, they'll end up on the same side. Probably just for well, <laughs> I suppose we'll see. Um, they're, they're besties. I can see it. They're going to be final too. Um, what about the, we do have a good scene with Eric where he also is like trying to make some inroads, trying to tell the, the Sababa kids like, Hey, look, I want to work with you. We're both kind of in the minority here. Like you should work with me. 
here's why, here are all the groups. And then also him talking to Tony and be like, no, you're not the person I have a problem with. I think we should vote out Tony. I think that's <laughs> the best way to get at JS. Um, I, we, egg roll, uh, wait, when did egg roll mention he would make food for JS? Uh, oh, he should have offered. No, he's saying he we, should have offered. We also something. see a shift in this episode from I want to get out Doug to egg roll fully being like, I wish JS wasn't on our tribe so he could get, or on our team so we get voted out. And also, <laughs> how do we weaken JS here? He's so real for that. Yeah. But you know what? Eric fed us, the audience, as well as his uh, his alliance members. Real. Well, why why was Eric not in that returnee meeting, though? He kept saying, like, wants to weaken JS, wants to get rid of Tony. Was he not in that returnee meeting pitching for the vote to be Tony instead of Andrew? I don't know. He, he was there. He was just sitting right by the camera. I said, was he, was he, pitching, was he pitching Tony? Was he pitching Tony? I don't know. Probably. If, if, if he was or he wasn't, I don't hate it because I, I think it was before that that um, Eric was approached and said, like, you're you're going to be the last returner that's in. Like, And, and then when you're that being told funny. that... That that's a kind of comes off as it is, it is saying you're non-threatening to us, but I I think that it also probably tells him he can play it low right now. Maybe he doesn't have to do anything right now because eventually someone might want to bring him into something. I don't know, but when when you're told that, I I couldn't imagine what his reaction would be to being told like we're going to take out every returner, but you're not going to be one of them. Um, that uh, that would I would have loved to have seen that in real time. Speaking like, of yeah, saying things maybe. to people, when the whole newbies were meeting and JS said straight up, like to the whole group of newbies, that like if one of us goes and it's seven five next week, only one of us needs to flip, and that's super dangerous. I'm like, you're saying to a room full of people, I don't trust you, bitches. One of you is gonna flip. <laughs> like that's an insane thing to say. In my opinion, I thought that was crazy. And also, I here's how you do math. <laughs> Look, I, you need to explain it just so it's clear to everyone. Uh, also, a great moment is we see them a quad together again. And we have another scene, another moment of Jack being like, uh, JS, I don't know about him. I'm not so sure. He's starting to piss me off. Uh, I but love... The quad staying together. The quad. Oh, that's that feels like the L seven weenie. I uh, I just feel like L you're but whatever. L seven weenie. Yeah, Is that like if you're a square, you're a weenie, you're a loser. I think it's from the Sandlot. Whatever. I'm moving on. Um, <laughs> I love that the McQuad does have these duos built into it of Tony and JS and Jack and Miranda, and I love that Jack and Miranda are they're working. They're working hard, but they don't have to work that hard. They're safe this round. The queens are safe. But that they have so much control, I think, over uh, what's going on. And also, I mean, I say that knowing an idol is played. Listen. But that they're working really well together, I think, in a way that I'm curious to see how Tony and JS are working actually together. Because, as we know, Tony is uh, also fraternizing with Katie, fraternizing with the enemy. But I really love Jack and Miranda, and I'm looking forward to where they go. And also in their final three plans. Tony is, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I assume I assume JS did not know that Tony told Katie before the vote. He seemed pretty no. shocked. Right. No, no, no. No one knows about the Katie and Tony thing except for Andrew. Um, but he doesn't even know how tight they are, obviously, because right. he expected Tony would be the one they'd take out if it was anyone. Um, we also see, very funny, we see... JS every moment he can. Tony's going to be the target. Tony's going to get out if they idle. Tony's the one they'll target. I think it's going to be Tony. And it's like, chill out, dude. Why are you saying this to everyone? It's so... Even to Doug, he's like, I'm fine with any of the newbies going home, just as long as it's not Tony. If I heard that, I'd be like, it's I think he's really... I think, honestly, he might have been really trying to play it up of like... I don't know. I feel like it was partially ego where he was like, they're going to try and take a shot at me. And the best they can do right now is by voting out Tony. But that, and like, you know, that's just, he's just going to say what he's feeling. But I feel like also it might not have been, he might've seen it as like, maybe it lessens his threat level if Tony goes out. 
because then he's not in a super tight duo, which like everybody already already sees them as a super tight duo. So of course he's going to be saying like anybody but Tony. So like maybe he's like thinking if Tony goes out, that's not the worst thing in the world for me because he is pretty set up. So true. With the rest of the newbies at this point as their cult leader. <laughs> I guess I guess if I'm in that position though, and you know that like the roommate thing is going around, do you really think e- even though you and Tony are, if you're JS, you and Tony are really close, can't you always just skirt that over to Andrew and Tony being the roommates and being really close, and that and and Andrew still being in? Obviously, JS has nothing to do with that, but you you can kind of move that over there. But it, it's so interesting to me that JS is then talking about how he wants Doug as like a meat shield, essentially. And it's like, well, you've already created your own meat shield and telling everyone how close you are with Tony. And so it, it's almost like he's got this contingency, like the understudy meat shield for when Tony goes out that he just wants one more meat shield or one more person in front of him. I, I don't hate the strategy. I'm a little confused by it, but I don't hate it. I don't think Tony's a meat shield for him at all. He is still always going to be a target over Tony. Whereas, like, Doug is somebody who, like, could be a target over JS. I don't think he would be, honestly, because it's just based on reputation alone. But, like, in this game, JS is a much bigger threat than Doug is at the moment. But I don't think Tony is a meat shield for him at all. He's just meaty. I, I will. I think more in terms of like the if you want to take out a number for JS, then you take out Tony. I think the same way he's kind of trying to prop up Doug, like he wants to hide behind that. So you can hide behind your relationship with Tony in the same way, I guess. <laughs> um, can we talk about some guy's comment that about Sam? Oh, let's talk about real, Sam. Real. I love Sam. Real. Very well positioned for the $100,000 that comes with second place. I'd for say. the Xfinity <laughs> gift card that comes with winning. She's yeah. getting all my Sia money. I'm, I will then most Sia $20 <laughs> after this season. <laughs> Look, Sam Sam speaks true about what, how she's playing. She says that if you're not in a book that I need for school, you're not important to me. Just because um, she doesn't know your name doesn't mean she doesn't want to work with you. You know, like that's, it, It's oh, true. Well. She knew not all three of the Sababa newbies. Michaela, Fish, the other one, yeah, the other one, yeah. <laughs> but she wanted I, to work with. I Andy. think she. I love what she said when you were like, "Welcome to merge," like your major. And Sam goes, "I didn't think I'd get this far." <laughs> and you know what, bitch? I she was gonna be first boot. Uh, yeah. So, and you know what? She was almost targeted, or she could have been targeted. No one talked about Boney on Sam. Nope. But yeah. she she threw shade at Eggroll though in the very beginning. I was like, "Are you serious, Sam?" She's like, when they were all like together, she's like, "Oh yeah, Eggroll's an idiot. He doesn't know what's going on." I was like, "What?" But well, because yeah. she's puppeting him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it takes <laughs> a you know more puppet, I guess. Because so. you know what, Eggroll could have targeted her, but he went for Tony. Um, because Sam, Sam and him are close. I, I, I agree that I do think that Sam is in a good position, but the funny thing about Sam's confessionals is that when you watch Sam's confessionals, and if you only watch Sam's confessionals, you would think that she's like a dominant force in the game because she talks like she has so much agency, which I don't think that she has a lack of agency, but she talks like she has so much of it. And she said something like, I play my game. Sorry if it doesn't work for you, but it was just, she, she has a lot of command, a lot of presence when she's narrating the game, at least from what she can talk about. Um, she didn't talk about a lot of like the substantive strategy stuff, but if you were just watching confessionals, you'd think that she's like at the center of it. Maybe the stairwell was closed this episode. <laughs> so she couldn't have her strategy talks. Look, so they true. told her who to vote for. And she said, huh, it's not going to happen, but sure. Sam knew. Sam uh, Sam was actually in the idol plan. Um, exactly. Exactly. She actually told Katie first before Tony and Andrew, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And she said, and she you gotta like, get, get out Andrew. Get out number one. Get yeah. him out. <laughs> number one. I feel like to, to Cody's comment about like should they have gotten out Sam, I think and Andrews, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. I just don't think people understand that she is connected to Jack and to JS. So it's almost like Sam is just seen as a tag along rather than actually an integral connection with some other people. And mm. as the return, as I think a lot of the debate is here, when you're using an idol to make a power move, why would it be Sam, somebody who doesn't seem like a power player, even if she actually might be in a better spot than we know? 
I agree. I don't think there's a world in which they go for Sam over like Tony. Like if they're that going in that direction, sense. they're going for Tony. It maybe makes sense for Katie, but Katie's one of, and for the rest of the returnees, it doesn't make sense. So. Agreed. I think that would have made the most sense for Katie, but yeah, mm -hmm. like I think that would have been a hard <laughs> pitch. Uh, uh -huh. I will, I will say like, there's no reason to target Sam. Yeah, you could get her out, but like, in the current position she's in, she's not strategically valuable to get rid of. Like, if she's not there, the seven are still going to meet as a seven. Whereas Andrew is more strategically capable, is more of a linchpin in dynamics. It's like, mm -hmm. you have to get rid of Andrew or Tony because that is getting rid of a roommate threat. It's creating shifts in the dynamics. It weakens the newbies overall. Sam is, as you're saying, a tag along, but also, like, she is not important to that alliance in the same way that Tony or Andrew is. Like, if Sam's not there, they just have one fewer vote. If Tony or Andrew aren't there, then you have to consider the larger game at hand and, like, oh, does JS really have a power in McQuad? Or, like, are the Sababa newbies in danger? Sam leaves, they're all like, okay, now it's 7-5. to five. But do you, do you open up a seat at Final Tribal Council if you get rid of Sam? Because is she kind of locked in as a goat at this point? Like, maybe open up a seat for yourself if you take her out. I think that you... <laughs> uh, Legend. Uh, what you have to understand is that there's so much more of this game. And, like, True. if you're going to make an idle play at this point, you don't necessarily want to do it on Sam. You're concerned about how do we five not go home mm -hmm. next week. <laughs> But did, yeah, this, did this help them not go home next week? Well, I think that's the question to ask. <laughs> that's a great question. I do say, I, I, I would think it did. I would say that, like, <laughs> Sam, Sam at least has it. Because also, I, I'm thinking about Eric, of course, as Eric's Always. number one defender. Uh, but I'm thinking, like, Sam is somebody who would actually talk to Eric. Like, and we, we saw Eric go on his tour. Oh my God, him trying to pitch to Michaela. Was like watching somebody do a timeshare presentation With a legal or something. Pad, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> he used his Toastmasters out. <laughs> but at least Sam is somebody he's had a conversation with before and who for the most part shoots straight when she talks to him even if they're not working together I think for someone like Eric you don't want to get rid of Sam because she's an unknown factor versus even like a Tony or a, a Andrew and Michaela certainly who are unknown factors um, that's his POV uh, anyways uh, you, what's up guys someone else go <laughs> I also think I, I want to live in alternative. Oh, go ahead. I also will say, like, as silly and meany as it is, Michaela and Dylan is at least a relationship that does give information to each other. Sam and Eggroll is at least a relationship that gives to each other. Like, yeah. Andrew and Eggroll is not. Andrew and Tony, or Andrew and Dylan and Doug isn't. Tony doesn't, like, Tony's giving some, but not a lot. Like, at the end of the day, if you're going to get rid of one of the four of them, Michaela and Sam have positive relationships with people outside of Katie. So then it really is like Katie has to figure out uh, which one of those two she'd be willing to throw away for Dylan's bloodlust. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Can we throw the Michaela comment up on the screen? Let's Woo! go. Michaela. <laughs> she got, she has the legacy. Um, she, yeah. She's in the most important position next week. She's she her and Fish kind of hold a lot of the power and either one of them could make it 6-6. Six, six, so Also, Michaela had screen time. She talked to she most did. of the returners. Yeah. She didn't hear her perspective which was we're voting out Morgan. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> press one to vote out press one to vote out dylan press two to vote out katie like these i mean the you didn't go you didn't go tony because katie wasn't gonna let that happen but she it's was more willing to let andrew it, go is what it, i assume eric did say we should go for tony it was ultimately not eric's decision it was what right. the five wanted to go to and realistically what dylan wanted yeah um so it could have been tony i think they just went yeah i mean Look, Eric, we know why you wanted it to be Tony. Unfortunately, you didn't have the idol. <laughs> and Andrew's not a bad move if they can really try to pin it on JS. Then I think it could make sense in hindsight right now. Yeah. Really, but if they really go hard as like JS wanted Andrew out, he was the rat. Just push that narrative to Fish and Michaela. Maybe you can bring him back to your side. So it could make sense if that's what ends up happening, I think. <laughs> um, I think it. We we so the ending of this we do see Andrew go home we see the newbies fail. There's something so 
funny about Morgan once again being the merge boot or being the merge boat and Dylan playing his idol again at merge. Like sometimes Lee, Lee made memes in the Discord that are so like, funny. Oh, it so, sounds like Katie's just gonna win again then. That's what it <laughs> sounds like to me. Well, it's so funny that all of these players, like they come back, they want to have a different story and it's not like they controlled it, but they have so many repeat things. Eric has a big moment at a tribal council that otherwise should kill him. Uh, and had he not had the immunity, but only makes us, him stronger. Only <laughs> makes him stronger. Um, Dylan has to play, finds an idol very early on, has to play it at merge. Morgan chills out, uh, not not controlling the game, but is certainly doing fine. Comes to merge, immediately targeted. Um, Doug's game is different. Katie has to play a lot harder. Um, Mike goes home. Faith goes home. But yes, it is very funny that Morgan and Dylan have the same situation happen again. Uh, do we think that does mean Katie wins? Yeah. And that absolutely. Doug loses again? Oh my god, wait! <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> okay, don't blame Doug for what Sadie did. Also, uh, is Doug the new Dane train? Ah! Choo -choo! This is this is his first tribal where he didn't get votes. Oh my god, King! Mm. Oh my god. Can we um, can we talk about Dylan for a second? Sorry, I don't think we've actually talked uh, uh probably oh, yes. about I yes. guess the guy who did the thing. Um New but I, I was I was really impressed when that confessional came up and I saw someone talked about it earlier, but like where was that actually in the order of events? Because I think that will influence all of our opinions on how goaded Dylan was in this episode. Um okay. Uh, let me think of, okay, yeah, this is the question. Was he lying? Like, did he already know? Um, so by the time we did that confessional, Katie had already mentioned this. I don't remember if this is post though, like if they had actually made the move mm -hmm. yet. Um, but I will say like, he certainly had the inkling. It's just like, he, he was not going to play it on Morgan till Katie pushed him to do so. Right. Like Dylan as was said by multiple people he's selfish he wants to keep the idol for himself but he was suspect why are they telling me this information like i don't know you why are you telling me it's me and that you want to keep me around who are you hi nice um, to meet you i'm not voting morgan yes literally yeah, yeah. um morgan but, oh who? no we're not voting her no, no, no. <laughs> trust me no, no no so i did he by the point he said it there he did know but, like, that didn't mean he was playing it on Morgan. Right. Yeah. I know, yeah. It was the flashy thing to do, but is Dylan in a better spot next week because he played his idol this week? I think he would have had to play it next week if not, because then they so would have had be the safe numbers next week. split. Would be safe next week. Is he safe next week now? No. Not at all. No. I guess that's fair. For the TV, I wanted him to play it, but I was like, mm, sometimes being selfish is the right move. But I also go back and forth on whether he, I think he, like the talking about like just giving it to Morgan to play for herself versus him playing it on her. Because I do think it's like, yeah, there is part of it where it's like, okay, yeah, clear, like you doing that. And then it's like, clearly the returnees are a super tight five, but also they've been like forced into mm -hmm. that position. So it's like, yeah, I don't know where I stand on that, but I think it does. It doesn't change much, I guess. So I think it is better for him to do it so that it is still like his move and his idol. And I get wanting to like maintain that. But I mean, it was said. That I guess. Katie, Katie said to him, like, if you don't play it this week on Morgan, next week you'll play it on yourself. And then me or Doug goes home. Right. So and then, then Dylan's not. In, that doesn't put Dylan in a better position either. No. It's in the game. Yeah, I mean, but like, what? But the, I mean, what is the difference between yeah, tenth and eleventh, like, or like eleventh and twelfth? Does point? he like, just need like, to like mm -hmm. ride it out till one or two returnees go, and then he'll be? He around has made. For I think he, eventual... Dylan, if he wants to, I think this is going to make Dylan start to have to make relationships with some of the newbies because the yeah. only one he has right now is Michaela. Like, he really does not have a good relationship or any relationship really with any of the newbies outside of Michaela right now. So I think that now that he and I think that the idol was probably a big part of that because he felt like he was leaning on that and like had that in his back pocket. So yeah. now that he doesn't have that to rely on anymore, now I think he's going to actually have to put in the work and play the game. And I think that it's just going to be a real test to see of like if he is good at it. 
he's, or he's if got, he is just good at having immunity. He's got one week to do it. Yeah. And also, yeah, I played. Go ahead, Lee. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I do think, though, that he should have given it to Morgan. He could always claim it later, but he did remove, like, any mystery around whether he had something at that point. And so that is the only thing I would possibly scrutinize here, because I, I agree with what you're saying about, like, the timing. Is it is it better if he lost one ally and did he lose two allies? But the one thing he has done is she's removed any doubts that he does not have an idol now and so or, or anything and so i mm. i do think that he should have given it to morgan so he can at least keep that shroud around him but i think everything else I, i'm i'm okay with the timing of the idol play i think that it's also like the idol kept a lot of the information from actually being real so everyone had to lie to dylan and katie and all of them now that the idol's been played hopefully mm. it's like relationships can be real like if you know that dylan doesn't have an idol you can say to him like point blank all right you know i'm not sure who i'm voting for like i've heard it's going to be you and it's like you're not actually trying to flush an idol you're telling him the truth so i think that's also a hampering on the social game like everyone's theorizing who might have it yeah you're gonna lie um but yeah it is it is a sophie's choice you either play the idol now save morgan and you don't have an idol or you don't you play it, more numbers. Morgan, and then next week you lose someone that you care more. Like, it was shown Morgan is not the highest of import in that returning alliance, but, like, Doug and Katie are. So you want to at least, ele- you want to keep it from being an 8-4 to four game. You mean, like, are important to Dylan, you're saying? Like, Katie and Doug Katie are... Katie and Dylan. Doug are more valuable in Dylan's game than Morgan is. And so by removing the potential for a split vote next week, it at least gives them a chance to do something else. So I guess. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't change that. I don't think it changes that Katie or Doug are in that danger position. Like I don't think Dylan is going home next week. So I think it's really, do you want Doug and Katie to have a seven to five chance or an eight to four chance? Yeah. And Dylan's biggest op just went home. So. Which is true. Yeah. I'm also very excited to see, uh, well, I was very excited to see Morgan uh, trying to play, although everybody lied straight to her face. I was very, I'm very excited to see where Fish goes in all of this. Trying to play. (laughs) Yeah, listen, she tried. It's just that nobody (laughs) was literally going to tell her anything. I I like Fish a lot as a player. I think that Fish is sort of flying, uh, Fish is flying uh, under the radar. Um, And I think he actually... He is playing a very interesting game. Yeah, fish just keep on swimming. Uh, in a way where I'm, I'm really compelled to see what happens to him in the next couple episodes because Eric Erasure. <laughs> I we're, <laughs> we're all in the fish tank. <laughs> that's the new. That's the new Dane train. Is the fish tank? <laughs> Absolutely yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I just I'm, I'm really excited to see what fish does, uh, and I think that. If anybody really benefits from like Dylan not having an idol, uh, the line sort of getting more blurred, uh, somebody like Andrew going home, I, I think that there's like a lot of opportunity now for Fish to get in there and like fuck some shit up. And we're always saying that the little king needs to rise. <laughs> it's um, short king summer, yeah. That's so real. Um. <laughs> Well, after this vote, we're down to it being seven to five uh, with seven newbies. Uh, yeah, it is very funny. This is called Fish in a Barrel, but it is not <laughs> related to Dylan Fish. Um, well, unfortunately, that's just how the cookie crumbles. That's just how the fish rolls. Um, that's just how the twink gets destroyed or whatever. Uh, I mean, who do we think is going home next week? Do we think it is going to be newbies first returners again or do we think do we think that like when the next time is is giving us the idea that js is in trouble is he actually in trouble what do we think will happen next week i think it's a red herring i think I, <laughs> if I... you think i would lie you think i would lie in my energy well, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not very confident but if i have to pick a person i'll say dylan next week because i think 
JS going to catch some heat, but he has done a decent job of getting the heat off of him. So, you know, things might be a little stressful for him, but I think in the end he'll keep um, Mikhail and fish. And I don't know if Mikhail and fish will have the guts to flip on the newbies so soon. Um, so I think, you know, I guess I kind of would like them to, but I think if when push comes to shove, I think they'll side with the newbies and I think Dylan might go home without his idol for protection anymore. So that's just my guess, but easily could be wrong. Yeah, I think unfortunately with this like power play by the returnees, it means that a returnee will be going home next week um, because I think that's just how they're going to look at it unless they do a great job convincing the returnees that like, or the newbies that, you know, one of you is a rat. There's one of you that you can't trust. But at the same time, if you're a newbie, you're like, okay, there's one of us that I can't trust, but there's five of you that I can't trust. So that I know that I can't trust and I know who it is. So I think it's going to be interesting. And I don't think McQuad is ready to get rid of JS yet. I don't know that that's in their best interest. So mm. unfortunately, I don't think it'll be him next week. But no. I could I could also see it being a Dylan or if they're still worried if they if everybody is like, oh, Doug got the merge idol, which I'm sure there's going to be going around because, you know, Doug, it could be. I don't I don't think Tony will let it be Katie, but he might get outvoted. Yeah, but it I could think, be Katie. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan or Katie would be my guess. Lee, what are you thinking? I'm I'm struggling. I'm. <laughs> Because I, on one hand, I think <laughs> Doug probably played with the newbies the most impressively tonight. But it doesn't help when he's always throwing out there, you know, I'm the biggest, I'm, I'm the biggest target. You know, if I wasn't safe, I'm going to be voted out. It's not great to always force that suggestion into people's minds. And so no matter the groundwork you put in with the newbies, I, I worry for Doug. I don't see it being Dylan and I don't see it being Katie. And and that's where I'm struggling. I, I just don't see it being either one of them. I, I don't want, I, I, and, and it's, it, I just want to see like something come out of nowhere and be like, wow, we didn't see this happening. Cause I, I'm, this is, you talked about, you can't have both worlds. Like I don't want it to be JS and I don't want it to be Dylan, Katie or Doug. Well, there's no other choices. Uh, I don't, I don't think it can be anyone outside of those four, but I don't want it to be any of those four. So that's where I'm really struggling right now. But I do think Doug did everything he could in this round to set himself up for some success when he's not safe. And I was really impressed. I feel like, I, I think there's a world where maybe like Eric gets thrown under the bus a little bit. I don't know whether it's the returnees mm. are looking for somebody to like, you know, he knows he's on the bottom of the returners. So could that yeah. come to play? But here's my vision, right? Work, work with me, everyone. <laughs> the idol hasn't been found yet. Doug is going to kick it into Doug gear. He is ready mm. to go. He needs to acquire. He, you know, he's going to go on a treasure hunt. He's going to get an idol. And in a beautiful moment of how Survivor can, you know, you can change over the course of a couple seasons, he's going to play the idol on Eric and save him and their bond. They're going to be in each other's weddings. Like, it's going to change everything. I just, I can feel it, you know? What if we just repeat this episode next week? Doug finds the idol. The newbies say we're voting Dylan or Doug. And then actually they're voting Eric. And then Tony leaks to Katie that they're voting Eggroll. And then... Yeah. Doug plays the idol on Eggroll and they get out Tony. And then Tony goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same yeah. thing can't possibly happen twice or <laughs> Why not? can it? Let's just copy paste and, you know, you, change the font a little bit and we'll have the same episode. It'll be great. Do you think Katie would sell out Tony to save the returners as the, like, as the rat? That's a great question. <laughs> Me and W are on the same page. Um, because... Because the the one thing that I have learned from watching Katie play, especially this season, is that Katie will make those relationships, but she will look out for herself first. And she has made that very clear in every piece of the edit this season so far. Even from the beginning where she said, like, I am not going to sink on the ship of the Returners. So I, I just wonder if she would maybe, I mean, she's already burned Tony in a sense. So would she not just be willing to sell him out now as the leak? And I think she's got to have at least one newbie that has her back. Like, yeah, I don't think she should. I, I do think that Katie is smart enough to know that you can't just bet everything on the returners too. that you have to diversify yeah. your portfolio yeah. or whatever. 
Yeah, yeah she had a disposable. She had a disposable newbie. She had two that had her back. She was able to get rid yeah, of well, Okay, newbie. rude. Okay, rude. <laughs> well, wow. I, I get. All right, I Andrew, get a disposable question. <laughs> she had two glorious. The disposable one is still in the game. How dare you? She had two you? glorious angels <laughs> helping her along the way, and unfortunately, she had to damn one to hell. Put up the comment. Put up the Andrew comment. So. My follow-up no, question, I guess, to that, the follow-up to the follow-up is, did, do we think that Katie told, or did we think that Katie told Tony that it was going to be Andrew beforehand, or do you think Tony was legitimately blindsided there? Don't give me that, Katie. Don't you dare give me that. <laughs> I think Tony might have knew. Like, what did Tony, how did that conversation between Tony and Katie end? Did Katie say, we're going to do... XYZ or was she like, okay, yeah, thanks for the information. I feel like, like and I feel like Tony could know because I think Andrew was more disposable to Tony mm -hmm. than he was to Katie. And so I feel like well, and the fact that like Tony knew about Dylan's idol and everything like that, I feel like there's nothing yeah. at that point. And like when Tony comes and tells Katie the vote, why is Katie not gonna then tell Tony the vote? And she does she Tony does assure know? Tony, she's like, it's not gonna be you. So does Tony know there's an idol in play, though? Does he know about Dylan's idol? Yeah. yeah. He, told, okay. he already knew about it before okay. this episode, yeah. Yeah. Be okay. Because he was worried about who was going to get idled out, and she was like, don't worry. Yeah, like, she it's said not it's not going to be you. So we just right. don't see, like, the conclusion of that. Right. But I'm so, sure yeah. she, like, texted him a heads up and was like, hey, by the way, your roommate's getting cooked. Yes. It was a text afterwards and not immediately following that line. <laughs> <laughs> Edits are mysterious in that way. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll we'll have to see what happens next week. It could it could be anyone. Um, I guess what do we what do we think they should do? Like, if you were in Fish and Michaela's position, should you side with one seemingly tight five over another seemingly tight group of five? I think, I think you, you side you, with the more desperate one, honestly. You pendulum to and which one is yeah. that? I think the, the, return, wall. the returnees are way more desperate right now. They just played an you... idol. Like they know that they're like they know that they're fucked. So you side with the more desperate, so you side with yeah. the returnees. Mm -hmm. I feel like you pendulum, you get out a returnee and then you flip back the next week and just like Yeah, I agree. Don't with let that. one side get too much power if you can, but I agree with that. But this, this is also filming at the time where the pendulum is kind of prominent in Survivor, so we we could have that on our wish list. The pendulum? Yeah, the, the pendulum where you, you it's team called, up it's with just, it's usually just called stuff. playing the middle. It's okay. Called, yeah. I, I wasn't I know <laughs> yeah. what the pendulum does. I just the reference of well look, we've already had JS refer to himself as a pendulum. I just was like, is that a I don't remember that being no, like it's, a recurring it's thing. Just playing it was in game changers. Yeah. So they, 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 they used they used the word why would he mm -hmm. make them fish between food? between millennials, Gen X, and Pendulum or the uh, Game Changers? It was <laughs> like where you going just to make flip them into side. food. <laughs> like, why would he make them fish food? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, this was the era of, of voting blocks and truth clusters and blah blah blah. Mm. Trust clusters, Trust Game Changers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, Anders, how does it feel to, as somebody called you in the comments, be the Raven Simone of Survivor twists? Oh, it's oh, so, so funny. true. It's so funny uh, when I when I was going back through and making this episode, like, oh fuck, this is just earn the merge. Um, <laughs> and I know there's going to be these annoying comments that are going to be like another earn your merge twist. Like, bitch, this came out way before that was a thing. All right? Anders, you, the right you know the thing you hate? Right Anders invented it. <laughs> <laughs> I and Actually. I'm the reason it's still there. Um, the Survivor was 39 days when this season was filmed. You know what I mean? Like, this was the good days. COVID? I don't know what you're talking about. You mean Corvid? What we call crows? Um, so, yeah, that was not... Look, and the same thing with, like, this was coming out at the same time as Survivor Game Changers, and unfortunately we called our little advantages Game Changers, so it was just like, well, it wasn't intentional in that, but... It is what's happening. Next season, we have little advantages called Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers. Um, <laughs> I found the Hustler advantage. Um, <laughs> uh, Eric, like, maybe I should have just eaten them. Um, should have just cooked them up. That's uh, the real way to win. Simply eat your competitors. 
Uh, so, okay. Uh, is there any other moment in this episode that we want to talk about? We didn't talk about Jack's list making a recurrence. Oh, that, I did write that down. That was that is mm. very, very important, I think, because the last thing on that list, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but <laughs> how poetic would it be if at the end of the season, Ander says, in the winter of Survivor Maryland, winner take all, Jack, and then it flashes her list, and then the last check mark goes up. I just think that would that be would very be clever editing. Thick so. as well. Yeah, and then it ends with a uh, a Dylan confessional of like that. Wow, was that was something. <laughs> <laughs> and then I yeah, I just steal from Survivor Michigan. <laughs> I had two other moments I wanted to talk about. Um, first was uh, Katie's fake game changer. That was like when you think you found a game changer, but it's really just this meme. <laughs> that was very, very 2017. Funny. It very much was, but I appreciate what? that. What, Carnation? <laughs> that, and then when Dylan showed his idol to everybody and Doug was like, oh, I played that last season. <laughs> Doug was like, oh, I had that. <laughs> exactly, some guy, exactly. Um... We love a Futurama joke. Yeah, I mean, it is, yeah, the idols are reused. So when oh, someone yeah. had all three, they can be like, oh, I have this one. Yo. I mean, uh, Michigan does the same thing. I've got two All-Stars idols on my bookshelf over there that have been there for years. So, you know, it's nice <laughs> Yeah, you didn't play them. You didn't need to. I mean, when they were All-Stars. In All-Stars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which one did I watched the season, play? okay? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean... Doug just had every idol, didn't play them famously, which is also why it's so funny. It's like, does Doug have the idol? Why are you concerned? He wouldn't play them. Um, <laughs> well, he was never in danger last time. Now he might. He literally was, though. Famously was in danger one time, very seriously. <laughs> didn't play the idols. Um, so we we any other moments that are in well, your mind that you really want to talk about? I just liked... I Jack liked- stealing shoes. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my god. god, Jack ripping off Michaela's <laughs> shoe. <laughs> oh man, they were vicious this season. And also, okay, there was a moment where, like, I thought Doug's neck was gonna pop off, like, his head was gonna pop off his neck yeah. because, like, the tire went so briefly around his neck and then he got it off. But I was like, did I just see Doug almost die on camera? That was insane. <laughs> I wanted to talk about Michaela getting the legacy advantage and just being like, I feel so bad. <laughs> like she just immediately was like, I can't believe I did that. She she didn't have to do this to me, but now I feel worse. <laughs> what what is, is that? What's the legacy advantage again? Is it immunity at six? Yeah, yeah. I know in the show it was like an idol, mm-hmm. but I'd never seen it be used that way. So I was like, it's just immunity at six, which I feel like. I'd rather have than another idol. Sorry about it. Um, so it is just like basically individual immunity at six. I like that. Hell yeah. So right now, Michaela yeah. gets to six. She is safe. There was a funny scene that I did cut from this episode where Doug's like, well, just floated it out. So I'm waiting for that. Uh, that uh, I'm waiting for the advantage back. And I go, that's what should have well, happened. It so I have good funny. news, and he's like, I don't have any. Uh, and he's like, cool. Uh, he did expect Ooh. that advantage back from Jess after giving it to her. Honestly, it's a fair <laughs> ask. Oh, wait. Oh, last moment I wanted to talk about was Anders showcasing his athletic ability and catching the idle toss from Dylan. Very impressive. You're so cool. Oh, my God. I'm so cool. Yeah, I'm a big character in these episodes, and I. <laughs> You're getting a great edit. I'm not gonna lie. I, do you guys think I'm gonna win? <laughs> no mask. You might. Um, I have a feeling I'm gonna be there every episode. Any other moments that stick out besides um, me being amazing? JS at Tribal saying like right after Katie said, I can't remember what Zach which said, but it was like something pretty good, and he's like, and that's why the queen stays queen. I thought that was really good. So. And the queen stays queen. Yeah. I didn't say all that. <laughs> It was after, um, it was after it's like, oh God, what even what? It, oh, Katie being like, well, Jazz talked about another ringleader. So clearly there's two threats in the newbies. Uh, yeah. She's also setting that- up. Yeah. She was setting up painting JS as the rat an hour later after tribal. She was thinking a couple of steps ahead. So it, also I mean, the great moment of Jazz being like, I don't think she's in this room being like, I want to work with Jazz. And then Katie being like, I fucking hate that guy. 
<laughs> I, I I said this in our chat last night, but JS saying my mouth is the most open mouth in the world <laughs> sent me to the moon. It's so good. <laughs> oh my god. What were what were Morgan's comments from the sit out bench? That also took me out. She's so funny. <sighs> She was like, Andrew tackled a guy. Uh, people's shoes are getting ripped off. It was not this extreme last season. Oh, it was um, emotionally extreme, but not physically extreme last season. Uh, yes, certainly. Well, of a different... It was the first day. It was much easier to just be like, whatever. Um, this season, they were like, fuck it. I'm going to punch this girl. <laughs> um, the other titles for this episode, uh, besides Fish in a Barrel, were... Out of the frying pan by Eric. Uh, out of one frying pan into another fryer. Um, <laughs> talking about going from one tribe to the other. Fool me three times. Another great Eric quote. Um, Morale is low by Dylan. Talking about <laughs> the split. Uh, I don't like sharing by Dylan. Talking about his idol. It's his idol. Um, and Winnick's idol. And, oh, rest in peace. <laughs> um, in Winnick we trust. And then in Andrew We Trust, which was Katie's line, which I love so much, knowing that they are about to vote at Andrew being like, in Andrew We yeah. Trust. That's so um, terrible. That's so terrible. I will the, not I will not forgive Katie for that. Genuinely, I will not. And then the final one was The Death of Me by Andrew. Yeah. Um, I think it's always funny to put someone's name in a title, like whether or not they're going home, just because... It's funny. Yeah. Um, there may or may not be an upcoming title that is for sure going to have a contestant's name in it. Uh, just because it's so funny. I really wanted to do it in, in Andrew We Trust for this, but it was like, is that giving it away? I um, think it's called The Fish Tank. <laughs> the Fish Tank. See, I don't think it, I I don't think it gave it away, though, because even in the context of that, when, when um, Katie's having the conversation with Dylan, I'm like, okay, they're choosing to trust Andrew. Andrew's not leaving. And so I felt as I'm sure Aaron did, I felt very blindsided at the end of the episode. I was jaw dropped for a full five minutes. My well, mouth was wide open. <laughs> much like <laughs> it. Exactly. Um, and Tony. Tony having a surprise expression while knowing who goes home is so funny. Um, an actor, all of them. Okay, winner pick time. Uh, Aaron. Do I, I, don't, I don't even want a new one. I don't even want one. Like, uh, do I pick a new one now because it's merge or like? Do you want to pick a new one of I the twelve? I really don't. <laughs> um, oh, I just I feel sad everybody. about it. I don't hate everybody. I just am sad. Um, no, I don't want to pick anybody else. <laughs> all right, uh, Aaron thinks they'll all lose. Naomi, yeah. who's your winner picks? Oh, wouldn't it be so funny to say Doug? Um. I don't know. I think uh, I mm, I'm gonna go with Jack. I think Jack's a legendary. I think she's doing so good, and I can't wait to hopefully see her win. I mean, Jack dragged Katie. Um, dragged. <laughs> when queens drag each other, you hate to see it, but you gotta watch. But again, uh, Eric and Doug maximizing their joint slate this episode was everything I could have wanted. Yes, real. Um, you know what? I'm gonna pick Eric. He'll be my new one. Okay. Uh, Matthew. Um, I think I finally, it's taken me a long time to feel confident about a winner pick, but I think I finally figured it out. Um, and I think the Dylan. bucket list has a lot to do with it. The fact that Anders took the time to put that graphic in there with the last thing being win the game. Maybe I'm reading too much into the edit, but also Jack's in an amazing spot. She's got targets in front of her. She's well-respected to where she's like not a goat, but not the biggest target. Like, she's got Miranda with her. She seemingly has Tony with her for a solid final three. She can bring Sam as far as she needs to. Um, you know, in final three of her, Sam and Miranda, I think she, you know, probably wins. So, yeah, I feel finally feel confident about somebody, and I'm going to say Jack, which probably means she's gone next episode. But uh, so Matthew we'll, we'll historically see. historically great right with winner there. picks, actually. Yeah. Is I haven't he? picked one right since uh, Jeremy in Cambodia, which was my first ever winner pick, and I haven't got one since then. So, Lee? Oh, I want to be different. And and I mostly see all of the stuff with Jack and really want to agree. And then Doug is throwing me off. I'm going to be very different here, though. And I am going to say JS. Whoa! I, I, 
I I think that like I mean, it, 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 if nothing else, the performance and the challenge today shows that JS can compete. And so, if there comes a point where JS needs to maybe win out, maybe he could. I I don't know. I think he's playing really really well, and he's kind of dangling in front of you, like I'm playing so well, and I'm the biggest threat, and it's a great like bait and switch to make us think JS is always going to get taken out when maybe it will never happen. Um, I, I don't know if JS, how JS will make the jury feel. So I could also see like JS making it to the end and losing, but I think that JS has great staying power and clearly the ability to communicate at the end. So I'm going to go with JS. Wow. So two Jacks, <laughs> JS and, uh, and an Eric egg roll. Um, wow. What a, what a stark difference. Only one woman can win. And it's apparently Jack. The fact um, that none of us are picking Katie is worrying. It though. is crazy. No one said Katie. Uh, <laughs> everyone's tripping over themselves Katie. not to say Katie. I'm too mad at Katie right now. I don't think that this was a good move for her. And I think that it shows that she does not have a stranglehold on this game. Like I thought she did. <laughs> I, th- I think um, she will find her footing. I, I think say. I think she's got footing, and and I can see Katie going far. But Katie's kind of one in one of those spots. It's like, how how long do you take Katie along, and then you know you can cut her, or you you know you can cut her, which can also be to your detriment. But I I think she will stay around for a while. I just I, I don't think she's gonna win. Uh, all right. Well. Let's. We have our winner picks. My winner pick, as always, is myself. Um, I think I'm going to win. Um, I think it's going to be Sabrina. She comes back and she wins the whole thing. Uh, all right, let's get some plugs in. Call me bathtub because it's time to plug. Um, Aaron, anything to plug? That was terrible. Um, Call me yeah, SpongeBob actually- in the Suds episode because time to plug. Um, <laughs> yeah, since nobody else is here from it this week, I'll go ahead and plug Scotty Survivor. Yeah! Um, we had a great and crazy episode six, so be sure to catch up, check that out, uh, and support your, yeah, support your local college survivors. Um, I'm sorry, this is insane. I liked him, but now he's getting too much support. <laughs> Namely where? <laughs> um, Maybe the winning hearts. hearts the that's made like, along the way. Yeah. Agro won a million hearts, so he doesn't need to win the game. <laughs> Eric's winning those hearts and those stomachs. Uh, Naomi? Hey, uh, I just want to say if you uh, want to play Survivor and you're not in college uh, because you're old or, I don't know, uh, I, I was going to say a child, but we don't want children to play. Um, apply for Survivor New York. Uh, season 8 is going to happen this summer in uh, a little bit outside of New York City. Uh tinyurl.com slash sny8 app uh come play survivor for three days in the woods uh and you can follow me uh at naomi Calhoun on twitter um we're wrapping up just one more second aaron um matthew anything to plug um just survivor michigan i guess it's on youtube um and one day i might do a uh i might do a brant steel alternate universe on youtube it's been one of my things that i want to do at some point so if i ever do that um, just look me up on Twitter too. Um, so you can see that if I ever do it. Um, <laughs> I was going to go to the comments. Don't worry. You, uh, Lee, don't worry. <laughs> Lee, anything that you need to plug? I imagine no. Uh, we have our finale. So if you want to watch the mole, uh, at subversion mole on YouTube, uh, you can watch our whole live season play out. Our finale airs Thursday at eight. And if you want to play the mole, we have apps for our season two happening in Las Vegas, um, closing a week from today. Uh, if you want to find us on Instagram, we're at subversion underscore LRG. Uh, well, if you like the mole, Subversion's great. If you hate the mole, Subversion's great. Um, obviously, we'll see you next week uh, for another fantastic episode. Maybe even a crazier episode, if it's possible. And this is even crazier. I might also be in New York for it. What? Um, turns out bad things... in the same room. <laughs> turns out an earthquake isn't the only natural disaster to come to New York uh, <laughs> this month. It's going to be me, too. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, my guests, for joining me today. Um, thank you, Andrew, for coming. Um, ooh. 
<laughs> Real. Mm, and now I'm starting to be like, I'm kind of glad this guy's gone. Um, Andrew, Andrew, tell me if you apply. We can. I'll be your final two. Um, <laughs> But yeah, thank, thank you all so much for joining us. I'm so glad this is probably the longest episode we've had uh, in the live show this season so far. Um, but that's all for us now. Have a good night. And just remember, bye!